Hi, I'm Courtney. I'm a jewelry designer, jewelry collector, and co-owner of Estate Jewelers here in Toledo, Ohio. I'm going to be making a series about antique jewelry collecting and anything basically jewelry related that um, people might have questions about. If you're interested in pre-owned vintage or antique jewelry, subscribe to follow us. And if you have any questions about jewelry, whether it's pre-owned jewelry, selling your jewelry, or any sort of antique jewelry styles, leave a comment below and we'll try to make a future video about it. Today I'm going to be talking about antique Victorian mourning jewelry. Victorian jewelry um, refers to a time period in England from the early 1800s, around 1830s, to the 1910s when Queen Victoria reigned. Queen Victoria really set the style, much like the monarchs do today, like how Princess Diana and Princess Kate Middleton, people look to them to follow their fashions. It was the same back in the Victorian times, and Queen Victoria definitely set the standards for the way people dress and adorn themselves. Um, the Victorian era had a lot of rules and regulations and strict social etiquette about what they could wear, when they could wear it, and they had all kinds of meanings um, and symbols in their adornment that they used. So Victorian mourning jewelry is a specific um, category of jewelry from the Victorian times that refers to the time period after someone lost a loved one. Death was pretty common during the Victoria era. Life expectancy was only in the mid 40s, so it was pretty common for you to lose a loved one or several loved ones during your lifetime. Mourning jewelry was a symbol to society that you had recently lost a loved one. So it was very common for people to have these items in their wardrobe. Even Queen Victoria herself lost her husband, Prince Albert, at a pretty young age, and she actually wore black for the rest of her life because of it. Um, and she certainly would have worn mourning jewelry too. So there's some pretty distinct features about Victorian mourning jewelry. First feature is in the Victorian times, you're mostly going to see yellow metal color. So meaning yellow gold. It's either going to be yellow gold, 14, 10 karat, 18 karat, or it's going to be what is known as gold filled. Now gold filled uses a base metal that is not gold. It's like a cheaper material. And then they cover it with a thin layer of gold. This is different than gold plating is today. It actually holds up much, much better and lasts a lot longer, but the price point would be much low. And for collectors today, you could find an antique morning Victorian piece for in the 20 to $50 range. Other features of antique Victorian morning jewelry would be um, the different sorts of gemstones they use and the motifs that they use. Um, one thing that they often wore were lockets. <laughs> Obviously, you can put pictures, photos and lockets of your loved one, and oftentimes they even put locks of hair or braided the hair into intricate designs and wore them on the lockets. One thing about antique Victorian lockets is the hinges are actually internal. So from the outside, they're not going to be too visible and they're going to be a little um, less manufactured looking than some of the modern day lockets. This can help you um, date when the actual locket was from. This one here is actually gold filled material. And this is a great example. It's on a Y shaped chain and you could actually remove this piece to shorten that locket up depending on the type of outfit you were wearing. So this was a very, very common item for mourning, not just for mourning, but for everyday wear as well. Now, one reason why these lockets would be considered mourning lockets is because they were set with little seed pearls. Now, back then they didn't have cultured pearls, so all the pearls were natural or they would either be fake but these are little antique seed pearls and those were um, thought to represent tears cried over the loss of a loved one. So that was a common gemstone used in mourning pieces during the Victorian times. Another material that they used a lot is called jet. Jet is a type of fossilized wood, it's black in color and black is definitely a main theme in Victorian mourning jewelry. Um, so this piece is made of jet, it's an antique brooch and the brooches um, from the Victorian times 
have, um, again, the hinges and the clasp are gonna be uh, not quite as complex as the pieces that you see on modern jewelry. So this is gonna be one way you can try to date Victorian pieces is by looking at those mechanisms to see how they're put together. This piece also has flower wreath motif on it. And in the Victorian times, flowers actually had meanings. Every flower had its own meaning. So for example, in this piece, um, daisies represent true love and forget-me-nots obviously um, kind of is in the name, but a true love that won't be forgotten, which is how this piece would be represented. Coral was another gemstone that they used uh, during vi the Victorian times, and coral was actually thought to ward off infection. They actually um, put coral in a lot of children's jewelry, but this one with the black wreath motif and the piece of coral um, would definitely have been something worn during a mooring period. This one here has a hook here, so it could be worn as a necklace and could also be worn as a pin. So you've got some options there about how that piece can be worn on your um, clothing. Photos were also used in Victorian mooring jewelry. Um, photos of your deceased loved one along with a lock of hair. And I don't have any examples here of the hair jewelry, but I'll try to link a picture in the video so you can see what I'm talking about. They would actually weave these um, people's hair into very intricate uh, necklaces and watch chains and make intricate patterns and put them underneath glass to be preserved. So that was a very, very common thing to do during Victorian times. It seems a little bit um, macabre to us today, but it definitely was an accepted practice back then. Uh, garnets are another gemstone oftentimes used in mourning jewelry. Um, kind of a deep, deeper, more somber color, but also very elegant and rich. And because of the red color, they were actually thought to purify the blood. So this is definitely another great example with the five rhodolite garnets. They're kind of a purplish wine color. And it also has that old style um, pin class that I was talking about earlier. So the most popular gemstone used in antique Victorian mourning jewelry is gonna be black onyx. You're gonna see this a lot, um, like this black onyx ring here with those seed pearls that I mentioned. Um, very, very common theme. Little black stud earrings, a black brooch with a seed pearl, and I have a few pieces here, a black onyx beaded necklace and a black onyx pin. So these are definitely going to be um, pieces that you see a lot that people would have worn every day. The neat thing about antique Victorian mourning jewelry is that because death was so common, there's a lot of these pieces available and at a lot of different price points. You could pick up a piece of mourning jewelry for the beginning collector for under $50, and they certainly go into the tens of thousands of dollars too. But you can get a pretty nice collection going for not that much money. Um, it's a really unique view into how Victorians lived and uh, adorned themselves. And it's definitely a really, really interesting topic. So if you're interested in learning more, you can definitely check out our website. We do have some antique Victorian mourning pieces for sale. Um, and we also buy them as well. So if you're interested, if you have something at home that you think might be Victorian that you're interested in selling, or really any pre-owned jewelry for that matter, uh, we do purchase that here because we try to preserve them and pass them on to future generations. So if you wanna check that out, www.estatejewelersolito.com to learn more, or if you have any questions, you can certainly comment below. Thanks for watching.